Welcome to Wired to Hunt's Whitetail Research, where we take one study and examine how you can use that to become a better deer hunter. I want to talk about a study out of Auburn University that explores how deer react to hunting pressure. In the whitetail world, anywhere you go, you're going to hear folks talking about how deer react to hunting. The question is, does the science back it up? And that's what the study interestingly did. Down in South Carolina, they collared 37 bucks, evenly distributed across age class. So there was two year olds, there was four year olds, etc. And they were monitoring what they did, when they did it, and most interestingly, what they did when folks started hunting. So they marked a series of locations around this property where there were tree stands and where there'd be hunters. And then they measured how often did bucks go into that area previous to hunting, and then how did that change after hunting. And what they found was that after just 12 hours of hunting pressure, buck activity was reduced 50%. So think about that. That's a morning and an evening stand hunt, or that's one day of all day rut hunting, and the buck activity dropped in half. The second thing they found is that it took about three days for that avoidance of behavior to change, and it took about five days for bucks to be back to kind of a neutral level of activity around those stand sites. What does this mean for us deer hunters? Number one, how often are we gonna be setting up stands like this that are set up in one location for the entire season? Now there certainly are places where maybe it makes sense. It's a great location, you know it's gonna be great. The trick is knowing that first time you go in there and hunt, you might be changing your odds of success the next day dramatically. Is it worth it going in on a 75 degree day to one of your best locations if there's a cold front hitting two days later? So think about when you're gonna go hunt these places, when you're gonna apply that pressure, and is it worth it? It's really easy to get comfortable. It's really easy to have a place like this all set up. You've got your sticks, you've got your safety line, you've got your stand there, and man, it's nice. You know, over the last 15 years, you've killed a couple really nice bucks there, so why wouldn't I wanna keep going back to it? And so you do. It's your favorite spot, you go back to it. But as this research indicates, very quickly, bucks adjust to that hunting pressure and move to other places. One of the things you can do to avoid that is to be mobile, to never let yourself get figured out by those bucks, to not have places like this be the only spots you hunt. Have 15 spots like this all over the place so you can be rotating to different properties. You could also have a mobile setup, whether that's a climbing tree stand or climbing sticks and a saddle, and just literally move to a brand new place every time. So you can keep hunting day after day after day but you're spreading that 50% reduction in buck activity across different locations. Deer, especially mature bucks, do have a certain fidelity to their home range. They'll find somewhere they feel safe and they call it home for a reason. It's not by accident. So they're not gonna bust out of there and move into a new neighborhood right away, right? They wanna go back to the spot they came from. Look at this in a measured kind of way. Realize that your pressure can impact deer and push them to do different things but also realize that going in there hunting one day isn't gonna relocate this buck to the next county. The very first sit is almost always the best. When you can get in there and surprise a buck in a place that he's never seen another hunter, you're gonna have a lot more success in those types of situations. So that's a balancing act. It takes some time and experience to figure out, but keep those two things in mind next time you're out there, and I think you're gonna see better hunts because of it. If you want more information like this, be sure to tune in to the Wired Hunt podcast or the Wired Hunt Foundation's mini-series. We've got new deer hunting know-how every week. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts.